In the last video, we started to define what the heat, standard heat of formation was, and we even did a little bit of practice on writing the chemical equations that would represent a heat of formation. Continuing on with the definition of a heat of formation, remember that a heat of formation was the energy change that's associated with making one mole of a compound from its constituent elements in their standard states. Okay. I want you to imagine, now, now that you have that, I want you to imagine a scenario. Okay, let's, let's imagine we have a mountain, right? And you got different people at different points on the mountain, all right? And I asked each person to tell me how, how tall is that mountain? Well, this person's perspective is gonna be different than this person's perspective and different from this person's perspective, right? Because there are different points. We know that, you know, as geologists, for example, there needs to be some standard starting point, right? We, this, geologists said, look, we, when we measure the height or depth of certain things, we need to have a starting point. So what is that? Well, you may have guessed it, that's sea level. So if I were to ask you, what's the height? of sea level, it's zero. There is no height. That's our starting point. Geologists have said we need a starting point to measure everything else against, right? So when we're thinking about how much energy it takes to make compounds, we need the same thing. We need a starting point. We need to think, hey, what takes zero kilojoules of energy to make? And so the heats of formation, we've decided that the heats of formation for elements in their natural form are gonna have a heat of formation of zero. Meaning, look, it doesn't take any energy to create these elements. They're already there. They're already existing. We are going, it doesn't take any energy to create them. And so, theoretically, it's gonna be zero kilojoules per mole for that. Now, if you change the state of the element, that would take energy. So, for example, it doesn't take any energy to form oxygen gas because oxygen gas is the natural form of oxygen. So I would say the, the heat of formation is zero. It doesn't take any energy to make it, it already is. But it does take energy if I wanted to form ozone, which is O3, right? O3 does have a heat of formation because oxygen does not naturally come in the version of O3. We have decided that it's O2 is its natural form. Same thing if I said, okay, would O2 liquid have a heat of formation? And the answer is yes, it would have a heat of formation because it would take some energy to make it go from oxygen gas to oxygen liquid. So here's an example of something I might ask on the exam. Let me see if I can get this back. Eh, a little bit. All right, what I might ask on the exam is this. I might give you a list of substances and ask you to tell me what species below would have a heat of formation of zero? So ultimately, I'm thinking, I'm looking for elements that are written correctly and are in their standard form. So argon, I would say, okay, can argon be written by itself or does it need to be diatomic? Nope, it can be written by itself, so that's that. so far so good. Does argon come in gas form at standard conditions? Yes, it does, it's a noble gas, so yes that would have a heat of formation of zero. I was a little too excited about that circle. So let's, I was, I was excited. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, mercury, can that be written by itself or does it need to be diatomic? Nope, mercury can be written by itself. Does mercury come as a solid? No, under natural conditions, mercury would actually be a liquid. So it would take an energy change for it to go from so, uh, liquid to solid. So that would not have a heat of formation of zero. It would take some energy change to make mercury turn into a solid. So I'm gonna cross that out. All right, iodine. Iodine is written as I2, is that correct? Yes, because iodine is diatomic. So that's, so far so good. Does iodine come in gas form under normal standard conditions? No, normally iodine would actually be a solid, okay? So because it's gas, that's not gonna have a heat of formation of zero. It would take some energy to turn iodine into a gas. All right, helium. Helium can be written by itself. And helium does come in gas form under not under standard conditions. So helium gas would have a heat of formation of zero. That's, that's how it already exists. All right, 
While hydrogen is normally a gas, hydrogen is diatomic. It has to be written as H2. So just hydrogen, meaning it's the H2 molecule split, that takes energy. That would not have a heat of formation of zero. Bromine is diatomic, and bromine does come as a liquid normally. So that would have a heat of formation of zero. And then finally, water, well, that's just, that just gets rid of right away because only elements can have a heat of formation of zero. It always takes an energy change to create a compound. So if you see any compounds, right away get rid of them. They can't be zero. All right, so now that you know how, what a heat of formation is, how the heck are we going to use all of that information to calculate a delta H for a more complex equation? Well, this is how we're going to do it. You're probably like, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. It's not as terrible as it looks, I promise. Essentially, what we're going to do to calculate the delta H of the reaction for a more complex chemical equation, we are essentially going to do the sum of products minus the sum of reactants. Okay, we're going to use the heats of formation. That's what all these little symbols are. Heats of formation, heats of formation. We're going to take the sum of all heats of formation for my products, and we're going to subtract the sum of all the heats of formation for my reactants. Okay, um, if I were, and looking at our standard equation up here, notice you have C and D are your products, minus A and B, which are your reactants. And then you have to take into consideration any coefficients that might be there. Honestly, this whole thing looks confusing. It's going to make a heck of a lot more sense when you look at an, an example. So let's just do that. Okay, so here's a, a more complex equation. I would like us to use heats of formation to calculate what would be the delta H for this reaction. To do that, we need to do sum of the products minus sum of the reactants. Okay, so sum of the products. There's only one product, right? It's carbon dioxide gas. So here's what I do. It's got a coefficient of two. So two times, what is the heat of formation of carbon dioxide gas? This is not something you would ever have to memorize. All these values will be given to you. So let's find carbon dioxide gas. Here it is, okay, CO2 gas, negative 394. And what's the unit there? It's kilojoules per mole. So negative 394 kilojoules per mole, all right? And then that's it. That's all there is for the products, right? There's Because there was only one product. Minus, what's the sum of the reactants? There's two reactants here. So my first reactant is carbon monoxide. So two times... What's the heat of formation of carbon monoxide? Here it is right here. It's negative 111. All right, and I'm not gonna write kilojoules per mole. Um, I'm gonna be a little bad and not do that. All right, so that's the first reactant plus, because it's the sum of the reactants, the second reactant's oxygen. There's one of them. What's the heat of formation of oxygen? Oh no, it's not down here, because it's oxygen. It's an element in its standard form, so it's actually zero. Remember, it's got a heat information of zero. So that's just gonna make that whole thing go away. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So two times negative 394, this right here becomes negative 788, and then minus, okay, two times negative 111 is negative 222. So if I take negative 788 and I subtract negative 222, my overall delta H for this reaction is negative 566 kilojoules per mole. Since that's what, that's the units for all these numbers that are down here. So that would be my answer. All right, let's look at some more problems. So examples 22 and 23. So just like before, let's go ahead and do some of the products minus some of the reactants. So looking here, first of all, some of the products. My first product is carbon dioxide. There's only one of them. And what's carbon dioxide gas? What is it? It's negative 393.5. All right. Okay, and then plus, what's my other product? Uh, two waters here. So two is the coefficient. And then times, what's the heat of formation of H2O liquid? Make sure you use H2O liquid. So liquids right here, don't use H2O gas. You need to use the liquid one, negative 285.8. All right, so that's the sum of my products 
minus the sum of my reactants. So my I have two reactants. I have CH4, there's one of them. What's the heat of formation of carbon, uh, uh, carbon, methane, which is CH4? Here it is, CH4 gas, negative 74.8. And then plus, we have two oxygens. Well, the heat of formation of O2 is zero. Okay, so that's just gonna go away right there. So let's simplify this. So let's figure out what my, my sum of the products is. So that negative 393.5 plus two times negative 285.8. My products, if I were to simplify this, that's gonna be negative 965.1 and then subtract from that, obviously one times negative 74.8 is still negative 74.8. So if I do negative 965.1 minus negative 74.8, I end up getting as a total negative 890.3 kilojoules per mole. All right, and I'm going to actually take that and move it up a little bit. There we go, because I don't want it to block what I'm doing there. Okay, let's look at the second problem. Example 23. Okay, products first. So some of the products. Okay, I got the two there, and then H2O liquid. That's going to be, we just wrote it down in the previous one, two, negative 285.8 plus uh, two times, because we got the two here, SO2 gas, where is SO2? Here it is, SO2 gas, negative 296.1. Okay, and then subtract some of the reactants. We got the two here, two times, what's H2S gas? All right, H2S gas, there it is, negative 20.1. And then obviously plus the, the oxygen's not gonna make a difference, so I don't even have to write that in there. So now let's start to simplify those numbers. What would be the sum of my products? So two times negative 285.8 plus two times negative 296.1. The sum of my products would be negative 1163.8. And then what would be my sum of the reactants? Well, two times negative 20.1, that's gonna be negative 40.2. So if I take negative 1,163.8 minus negative 40.2, I end up getting for my overall delta H for this one, negative 1,123.6 kilojoules per mole. All right. And that would be how I calculate the overall reaction enthalpy change using heats of formation. That concludes section six. We've got one more section to go. I'll see you in the next video.